Hey, I'm Mac. Welcome back to my channel. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon for access to new videos 12, 24 hours early, as well as some Patreon exclusive content. So I thought that today we would take a little bit of a lighter topic and go ahead and check in with Heidi Powell and Dave Hollis, who apparently refuse to define their relationship, or at least one of them does. Heidi Powell and Dave Hollis, if you didn't know who they are, you probably do, everyone watching this probably does, but very quickly. Uh, Dave Hollis is the ex-husband of Rachel Hollis, and he, along with Heidi Powell, who is the ex-wife of Chris Powell, famous for being on reality TV weight loss shows, Currently, Heidi is a fitness influencer. As a team, Heidi Powell and Dave Hollis are generally considered to be the world's leading experts on generalized aimless internet flailing. Dave Hollis, it's not clear what he even does anymore. He's an ex-Disney executive. And Heidi Powell is basically doing her fitness thing, but she's also started doing some events that seem strangely evocative of the events that Rachel Hollis used to do. I'm just saying. For a while there, Heidi and Dave were publicly dating, but now it seems like they're publicly fuck buddies, I guess. It's it's not quite clear. <laughs> For the past five weekdays of last week, Heidi has been hosting a five-day fitness boot camp where she has a, gives a five-minute workout every day and then does a live stream every day. On the day four of the boot camp, Dave Hollis made an appearance and I thought maybe we could check it out and see what these two fucking aimless flailing grifters are up to. Let's just check in. It's gonna be light. I'm gonna try to keep the dull sections out of it. Um, but I don't want to do any speed modding of it because I, it, it just, people get confused. People forget that it, that it has a speed mod applied. And also I find that for people who listen to these videos sped up, it's annoying to have two different speeds operating in one video. So yeah, <laughs> we're just going to do it that way. And if it's long, it's long. Let's go. Well, why does my hair look so greasy? What? It does in this light. Come on, let's start with some like high fives to yourself. You you deserve it. You're I worth did, it. I didn't expect it. You don't need to start by putting yourself down. I just didn't. It's not. I this mean, is grease is of, not a bad thing. This is a community of positivity. Okay, first of all, how is greasy not a bad thing when we're talking about your hair? And second of all, it's not its not necessarily what Dave says, it's how he says it. And clearly everything he says is always dripping with contempt. And it's, and yet he's saying to be positive. It's so, it's so weird. This relationship is so toxic. Lifting each other up. But grease is not a bad thing. It's not? No. You were saying that as a term of endearment. I said, why is my hair so greasy? <laughs> No. <laughs> See how mean he is? I mean, that that is the face of a man who is being utterly contemptuous. I always like to look at myself in the mirror and ask about the greasiness. Of Am I in the right community? No one's. Oh my God, Dave, let it go. Here. <laughs> Are you in the right community? There were zero, zero people. Oh, we have five people here now. Well, that's great. Val, I'm so sorry if you're watching this. I saw you say text sent, and I thought you were saying text received. Nope, but well, that's okay. Brenda's here. Hi, Brenda. Dave's here. Oh, I haven't even introduced you. So a lot of people, well, I mean, they may have seen, but remember, there are so many new faces in here. I know. Yeah, and you know, if they don't know about Dave, it might be best for them to never know about him, Heidi. And uh, let me get set up for the live. What's up, Thelma? What's up, Amanda, Andrea, Brenda? I introduced myself doing those uh, lunges from Satan yesterday in the uh, very- Wait, does that mean that Heidi is Satan? Spot where the- Are you calling program... me Satan? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Because I gave you No, her. I wouldn't dare. I just think lunges- Well, you kind of just did, Dave. Do you see how offended he got at that? Because she noticed 
a logical flaw in what he said because he said lunges from Satan, but Heidi assigned them. And so she's like, are you calling me Satan? And that makes him angry because that means that like for a second there, she seemed smarter than him. And and he, but but he's the smartest. He's the smartest. Right. You see, look at look at him. He's so mad. He's so mad. He gets actually genuinely mad when stuff like this happens. And it's weird. And then he'll he'll like play it off like he's joking when he's he's clearly not. You can see it on him. Generally Art. speaking, <laughs> are from Satan. Uh, but I oh, is that why you um, don't go all the way down with good form when you do lunges, Dave? Is, is that why? Is it because they're of the devil? I already introduced myself to the community in the vernacular that you like me to use. I am Heidi's male traveling companion. My name is Dave. It's nice to see you. Heidi's male traveling companion. I'm like a... Jesus Christ. Heidi. Heidi. Look at me. I, I know you watch everything that's critical of you, so look at me, Heidi. I want, I want to get something crystal clear about what Dave does and why he does it. He hasn't proposed to you because he doesn't ever want to marry you. He refuses to call himself your boyfriend because he doesn't want to commit any more than he has to to you. He's not moving forward with the relationship because he doesn't want you. He's actively rude and disrespectful to you because he doesn't like you. And he's still hanging around and collecting the beneficial aspects and benefits that he can off of you because you allow him to do it with as little giving from him as possible. You can do better. I, I promise you. Do you know you can do better? You can do better. Jesus God Almighty. It's not that complicated. It's really not. Okay, cool. Great. Glad we cleared that up. Uh, an emotional is, support dog. I think there are a handful of people in this group who are just wanting an answer to our status. What is Heidi, he's not going to give an answer to your status because he knows he doesn't have to, because you will still let him be around mooching off of you. So I, I would stop setting him up like that because he's not going to give you what you want. He's not. It's your status. <laughs> Emotional support human. Uh, he actually went, you know how you can take- Guy who makes you laugh. <laughs> I'm not even gonna make that joke. Huh? <laughs> I was gonna make a joke, but I'm not. Don't make the joke. <laughs> Don't make the joke. Okay, uh, we're still waiting for the text to be received. Should we talk if about uh, how sore our legs are from yesterday while we're here? Uh, yeah, we should. What, mean, what's, what's the deal with these texts not what being is the seen? Deal with these. Well, my legs are sore because yesterday I hiked Mount Olympus, which is 4,400 feet of elevation gain here in Salt Lake Valley, and. Wow, it is so steep and it, it is just all out the whole time. I figured that I, I've been in I've been in the Salt Lake area for too long to have not hiked Mount Olympus. So I finally did. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> and that's that's way better than the workout that y'all did. Not being received. My legs are still rubbery from yesterday. Can I? So interestingly, Dave did some lunges or whatever, and he's rubbery. Okay, I climbed forty four hundred feet. That's almost a mile vertically. My legs are not rubbery from yesterday. Some people are given gifts, and other people's aren't. I thought that God spent extra time on you, Dave, to put all those gifts inside you. She said I was the crazy lady doing lunges down the street last night. Andrea feels right. Did you see my Instagram? <laughs> like. Dave went downstairs at 11 p.m. to go. Dave was at your house at 11 p.m. 
That's suspicious. That's weird. You know, it wouldn't kill you to make him give just a little bit in this low relationship, Heidi. It's kind of embarrassing. Go check the doors, lock the doors, whatever. Because I went I'm downstairs like, to take I'm the pre-cooked chicken that I'm That's eating all week long out of the crock. Okay, can only one of you talk at once, please? And mainly I'm talking about Dave. Can you stop interrupting her? Pots. The doors also uh, were I was laying in bed. I was I, asleep. How do you get chicken out of the little crock? He walks upstairs. And I had said right before he went downstairs, I said, here's what actually I said. And I need you guys to know this because this is very important. I had said, oh my gosh, today came and went. And I didn't even think for a second to do my five minutes of lunges. I didn't. Don't be hard on yourself. Like, I'm not hard on myself. I'm just telling. So I didn't think to do them. And I, I, I let my day get away from me. And I said to Dave, I said, I'm going to have to do them tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to do two. And then he's like, okay, cool. And not even thinking. He goes downstairs. You can't do five minutes of lunges before tomorrow. It's not it's like not a lot of time. I mean, if it's bothering you, then just do it. I'm laying there and I'm like, hold on a minute. Why? I just did, with, like in my mind, what old Heidi used to do, what we're all susceptible to do. I did what so many of you guys probably do or think occasionally too, or all the time, right? I said, I'll get to it tomorrow. I said, diet starts Monday, not diet, but plan starts Monday. I said, okay, I mean, a diet is still a plan. 2015, that's my year. I said, all the things I, right there out loud, had decided to break my integrity. I, and, but like, I, this is not a laughable, it's a it's real, real thing. And, it's real. But it's, I wasn't even really conscious of it. And the second I became conscious of what I said, I was like, wait a sec. I just said, it's okay, I'll do it tomorrow. And it is okay, right? So if we break our integrity, we learned yesterday, we're imperfect humans and we can go through the process, the CRR process to get back on track. But I was like, no, I, it's five minutes. If yeah, exactly, that was my point. I, I didn't really feel that it was necessary to go through all of this psycho babble mumbo, mumbo jumbo to get to the fact that it's five minutes, it's not gonna take that much time, so you could just do it. They can do it, because I was watching you on Insta. I can do it, so I need you- That's kind of creepy. You guys to know that I am human like you, and I- Oh my God, did you know that Heidi's a human? Wow, that really just blows my mind. justify and come up with reasons why I can't not even like a, oh I'm trying to get out of it but just like a, oh I was so, I had so much going on yesterday including my hair I had to get my hair done <laughs> everybody has a lot going on Heidi <laughs> by the and, way I was like snapping hold, hold on hold on but I did it and it was because of you guys so time I was snapping the lid on the chicken oh, that's I the meal prep snapping videos of oh no no, no I was no I was snapping the lid on the chicken and all of a sudden I hear this like Boom. Boom. Um, okay, so let's, let's go by show of hands here. How many of you would say that meal prepping the night before at 11 p.m. or later at someone's house disqualifies you from just being their male traveling companion? Yeah. Cool. That That's something else. And I just checked the door. So I'm like, I doubt that the burglars, knowing that I just it's locked the door, upstairs. right above where I am <laughs> in the kitchen, boom, boom. And I was like, I bet she's doing those stinking lunges. Did and you I, know? The thing is, I, I, well, I had a hunch because it was either that or something was broken in a like a laundromat style <laughs> washing machine that had been turned on in the 11 p.m. time frame. But as I mean, can't do laundry at 11 p.m. Made my way up the stairs. It's like completely dark too. Here. Okay. Here comes this shadowy figure out of the frame of the door doing the lunges. And I was like, I knew it. So when I knew, like I, when you came upstairs, I said, oh, there's seven lunges every direction. <laughs> I did. Because I had, in my room, I could get one, two, three. And I was like, man, this is going to be a pain if every three steps I got to turn around. So I 
It, do you realize that this isn't interesting? I opened up my door and realized if at the door I can get four more lunges. <laughs> like, so it was seven down and seven back. And I decided to have time go by faster. I decided to count my lunges. And I, I think it's a great thing because the next time I do it, I love quantitative proof that you are getting fitter. And so next time I do five minutes of lunges, I'm gonna know, or I'm gonna have a marker. I'm gonna be like, I did 138 lunges in five minutes last time. I gotta get 139. Cause remember, it's just about being 1% better. Well, 1% better would be 139.38. Oh. Because that's what 1% You're is. Basically in math now. <laughs> I'd have to stop. <laughs> it's funny because when I was doing them in the garage, the people that were watching, I was like holding my phone, which was kind of funny. I could see the comments as I was going. Yeah. Someone was like, oh, he's watching the pot boil. Because I kept calling out how much time was left. Oh. And so I think there was like a certain school of thought that was like, if this hate, yeah. idiot would stop looking at the clock, it would just move faster. Like when you Yeah, I'm with you on that actually. Um that's the same reason why I have to put like a towel or a sweatshirt over the entire display of a treadmill if the weather is bad outside and so I have to run on a treadmill that day. I, I can't do it if it's not completely covered up or I will just stare at it. Also, Dave, here's another idea is uh, like, don't live stream your workout. You maybe you would have a chance to develop better form then because you could watch people who are doing it correctly and then uh, imitate that form yourself instead of further worsening your already terrible form by holding your phone like an idiot because you look like a moron. Just so you know. On the I remember I used to be a cardio bunny. I'm not. I the only cardio I a cardio bunny. Do you not know what that is? I, I'm new to all the terms. So a cardio bunny, and there's many of us here, are people who wrongly believe you got to come in my challenge. I got the text. <laughs> so a cardio bunny. Let me tell you, um, I was a person who wrongly believed that the way for me to get the body that I wanted was to do all the cardio. Oh. And it, it's- Well, cardio is the proven way to live longer. Cause at the end of the day, to get the health benefits in terms of mortality, uh, it, it all comes down to how much cardio you do per day. Wrong, it's wrong. And I did not know it until I got into physique training, actually CrossFit, I, you, many of you may not even know my journey. We talk about it in the challenge. So if you're coming in there, I'll tell you. But um, I, Mandy says, I hate cardio. But when I was a cardio bunny, which by the way, if you are a cardio bunny, there's a really good chance that you're like, why am I always feeling? The term I always hear is um, skinny flabby, right? Like, so yeah, because a lot of people do cardio trying to get smaller, right? So cardio. Oh, see, I forgot that in the you know, diet and fitness racket, the, it's more important to lose weight and be smaller than it is to be healthier and live longer. That's my mistake, my bad, you guys. Because if you were, if you're gonna do one thing, it would be better to do cardio because cardio makes you live longer will accelerate the rate at which we burn fat. However, abs are made in the kitchen. You cannot outwork a bad diet. So if you're not putting you- I mean, that is true that visible defined abs are essentially a function of body fat percentage. Um, and they're very, very difficult to maintain because of the body fat percentage requirements in order to get them to show up. For men, they'll start to show up around 15% or less, but to show up really defined, you gotta be down to 11, 12% maximum body fat percentage. And for, for women, they'll start showing up around 22% or less, but for, for really visible definition, 18, 15, 18% maybe. It's it's not a it's not a real practical uh, thing to maintain, and it's not necessarily healthy to be always eating in such a way that you are 
able to maintain that body fat percentage is not necessarily a great thing. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. They're, they're, they're rare enough that people aren't expecting you to have them. <laughs> For the progress in, in the kitchen, it does not, it literally does not matter. You can run till you're blue in the face and you're just gonna, you're gonna have lots of endorphins pumping through you, but you're not gonna get what you're looking for. A lot of people are looking for tighter, um, tighter muscles and fuller muscles and like a tighter physique. The only way to get that is actually to eat enough food. Like I had to, I was talking about it today because I got trained by my physique coach. I had to double my calories, double them. And I had to be okay not caring about a number on a scale and letting that number go up to actually achieve um, a physique that was like, that, that I needed for competition, yeah. right? That judges were looking for. And it was the most empowering thing. It was well, yeah, I mean, muscle's really heavy. And if you are not getting enough food, your body's gonna preferentially get rid of muscle because muscle burns energy just when it's existing. So it's very costly having a lot of it. And if you're not feeding yourself enough food, it's not gonna go well. And you know, I don't I don't like to get into the weeds on all this. Double my calories, have my calories. I just don't I think that it's not a healthy mindset to be getting super hung up on on calories. I I really lean more into the uh try to eat as many foods as you can that don't have a nutrition facts label. Not because I'm thinking that that's going to keep you from focusing on calories, more just because that means it's probably natural whole food if it doesn't have a nutrition facts label, like uh, fruit, vegetables, you know, um, and, and also more into the intuitive eating kind of thing where you're thinking about what what feels right, what's going to make you feel good long term, not what's just going to slake the anxiety you're having right now or what's going to make you feel good in the next five seconds <laughs> uh yeah I, I think it's i just think it's not a good thing to get super hung up on counting calories and stuff i don't think it's very helpful and i don't think that it leads to a healthy relationship with food i think it very quickly becomes some type of can become it doesn't always, but it can become something disordered or it can become an obsession sort of in a very toxic way. And for what? It was the most empowering thing. So Mandy says, so to lose weight, oh man, I mean, listen to this. You guys, I wanna sit here all day and answer these. She says, so to lose weight, um, where'd it go? Uh, back down. down? Yeah, yeah. I think it was like, so to lose weight, you don't have to do cardio. I think you said something like that. <sighs> cardio is not the answer to weight loss. So this, in the challenge, we talk a lot about it, nutrition. I mean, just broadly, exercise is not a great route to weight loss. It's again, I mean, just like I was saying earlier, it's it's kind of a, not a, it's not a very good reason to to start exercising really it, it's a good reason to start exercising is because it makes you live longer it just does on its own irrespective of weight and the thing is wanting to lose weight i i just don't think that in most cases it's going to be enough of a motivator or a strong enough reason to continue something that's difficult, like a, like a, you know, it's very difficult to pick up and continue a, an exercise regime. And I don't think that wanting to lose weight and the very minimal weight loss effects that come from exercising, I just don't think that's going to be a good enough reason and a powerful enough motivator to get through those um, difficult uh, starting days and difficult days where you don't feel like going and stuff. Whereas it makes you live longer and it makes you feel better and it makes you um, it makes you healthier just in general. That's a good reason to to exercise. And I think that that is a much more powerful um, motivator. So 
I, I just, I, I, I understand the desire for weight loss because we live in a culture that is very um, fat phobic and is very, it places weight above almost anything else in importance and it's bullshit. Um, but uh, I just think that exercising for weight loss will lead to disappointment most of the time. You really want to look at look at what's what's actually important. So we ran a challenge in August. Yes, Mandy. We ran a challenge in August, our very first challenge a year ago. OK, that challenge was a thing that I only did because Dave was like, hey, I'm on a journey. And people were asking what program Dave was doing because his body has completely transformed in the past year. Crazy. crazy. He had crazy. skate, whatever. And so I was like, sure, I'll put together 60 days of workouts. I did not understand the business side of it. I did not understand how I. What are you talking about? Dave doesn't look any better. <laughs> I'm just saying. I thought it was like I was going to write workouts and we'd send them to people. And then it turned into the most magnificent challenge. And I was only going to do one. Like, I didn't even think it was a thing that you could repeat. <laughs> and so it was wild. such a demand. And then I was like, all right, I'll do two a year. And then we did the second one and we're like, no, sorry, we're not doing it till fall. And I'm like, fine, we'll do one before summer. And we're now doing another one in two weeks. But so the first challenge ran and I didn't have like, I just went live and occasionally gave tidbits like this. And I saw such a gap. There was such a gap in understanding cardio and understanding food. There was such a fear of food and such a misunderstanding about working out in cardio. Like, and I, I only saw the gap and I could recognize it because it was the same gap I had lived in for so many years. Like, I fail to see how your approach is doing anything to address that fear of food when you continue just obsessing on calories and stuff. I wrongly assumed, even as a coach, right? I wrongly assumed that my body was different than everybody else's. And that in order, like, if I stop doing cardio, my, my I'm going to lose my muscle, all the things. Like, I mean, you, you just have all these ideas about what's going to happen to your body if you let food sit in it without working it off. And it's so wrong. And what you. Okay. Again, working off food with exercise is such a losing battle, okay? It, if you if you run three miles, you've burned like less than a tiny bag of Cheetos, like a, the smallest size that they come in, the fun size or whatever. Do by doing too much cardio is you actually begin to suppress your metabolism. So your body is brilliant. Your body is so, it's adaptive. Like your body will adapt to the stimulus you show it, right? So I love to say, it's like transformation of any kind. It's not even about like, hey, I need to look like this to be enough. No, it's like, I know I'm the captain of my ship. I can look any way I want. I get to pick and I love myself. All right, if we're going back to the captain metaphors, I'm so over it, okay? I'm so over it. Now, I love it then, I love, but like, I know to get to where I want to go, you have to understand this. You have to almost look at it like a game of poker. I always joke because I say this and I'm like, I don't even know how to play poker. One day I'll teach you. <laughs> but wow. So Dave doesn't know anything about sailing a boat, talks about boat metaphors, and Heidi doesn't know how to play poker and she's making poker metaphors. You know what I don't do? I don't make metaphors that are based on things I don't know shit about because they, they inevitably end badly. But like... You have, say, f how many cards are in your hand when you play poker? Depends on the game. Wow. Game? But like five? Well, Does that sound right? Sure, let's call it so five So let's cards, say you go. have five cards in your hand, right? Or let's talk about a tool belt. You have five tools in your tool belt, right? And these tools are all so beneficial and they all work. But the real, me like, you don't want to, once you use the tool, you can't use it again for a while because it almost has to recharge. So most people are like, oh my gosh, I have five tools. I want to get to where over there. I'm going to use them all right now. 
and then they use them now and like then they it like their body adapts right and like then when you run like that starts to adapt you don't have another tool to play so we say it's like playing a game of poker you're going to play one card at a time you play one thing right you've heard me say it, if it ain't broke don't fix it wait till that one thing stops working then you plateau i will then say when you plateau she wasn't done, Dave. Her metaphor sucks, but she wasn't done. Let her fucking finish. You play another card and wait till you plateau. Go, go. It's a slow change. Then we, when you plateau, you play another. And in the meanwhile, these other uh, cards are charging back up so you can use them again later. It, it, it's magic. Well, yeah, you got you to gotta charge the cards w before you play poker. I hate when I go to play poker and my cards are out of battery. Like, I get what she's saying, and she's, and I, I guess she's mostly right about that. It is good to vary things when you hit and when you hit a plateau or whatever. But, but, you. This is why it's important to carefully choose your metaphor because it's just weird when it doesn't work at all. Like that one just did not work. <laughs> No, like it's magic in my own like last couple of years, especially since I've met you and trying new things. I mean, like I, there's so many things inside of nutrition and in lifting that I have never tried in my entire life. I'm a pretty impatient person. I started to see some progress and I have had plenty of times where I'm like, I want to do all of it because, man, I got a little taste of progress and I want to accelerate it. You're like, I want it all at once. It's taken such yeah. like crazy discipline and listening to someone who actually knows what the heck they're talking about, you or someone in like a registered dietitian. Are we talking about the same person, Dave? Because you, and I'm not trying to be rude with this, you, because every, everybody, Everybody acknowledges this. Everyone who has been even remotely following your whole saga agrees that you have aged like 25 years in two years. You look so much worse than you ever have. And I'm going to guess that's mostly because of alcohol abuse and other factors. But it, but it, it's baffling to me. Like, what are you talking about? or a trainer or whatever it might be it's such a beautiful thing when you can follow a plan and trust the process to yeah. see the way the process unfolds god i am so sick of trust the process i don't trust processes okay i i trust evidence and i trust logic and i trust sources based on past performance i don't i don't trust processes i trust results but it's a, there's a lot of it, though, that I will say for me was super counterintuitive. Yeah, it, it does take just trusting the process. And that's why, it, like, from the beginning, I OK, if it if it takes trusting the process, then I'm out. Say, hey, I I am so appreciative that you guys are here and that you trust me. And because I know that if you go all in, which is another huge lesson that we talk about. OK, Rachel, thanks in our challenges, which, by the way, Tammy, I saw you. Heidi, do you think we should take massive action? Your comment, Lori, I saw yours. Challenge details. I'm, But if you trust the process, go all in. It actually does work, but it's like the less is more. Jill just said, can't believe what five minutes does. That, yes, like I want you to think about those things over and over and over. Like five, you listened to me. You actually did just five minutes a day. Well, yeah, five minutes does more than zero minutes. Like it, it just objectively does. You're just baby step digesting these lessons that are, like I've said, they are the glue to make the habit stick. They are the mortar to like actually solidify the bricks that we're laying one at a time. Mandy said the challenge isn't even over. My mindset is crazy awesome. Mandy, I, I love it. I love that you guys are seeing this right now. I want to be on the challenge. Can we still sign up? Um, to be honest, we haven't even opened up registration yet. So what we do is we actually wait until right before. Um, usually it's like halfway through the week before pre-week, so a week and a half before the challenge starts. I did say on the live yesterday to email. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm seeing all your questions. I did see if you emailed, um, my team will send you a link, but I'm not ready to, it's not going to anybody else. And the reason I say that is because 
as I was talking through it with Dave last night, I want to figure out like a bonus or a thing that you guys will get above and beyond everybody else if you end up coming in. Like, um, I'm actually thinking there, maybe we do like a, I'm thinking out loud right now, but like a Zoom where I, I'm just going to say this right here, Heidi. A live stream is a very bad place to think aloud for anybody. Just bad idea. Move on. Whoever is from this group that completed, because the thing is, you deserve it. Like you guys took the extra step. You took the leap of faith. You went all in. You're here. Go all in. Take massive action immediately. Not once you take a leap of faith and you're flying through the air. She really is just a little uh, off brand Rachel. Great. In this with me and you're putting forth an effort, you're 1% better every single day. And to celebrate that and even I, I help you along the way, I'm thinking anyone from here. that What the hell are you nodding at Dave? Ends up doing the challenge. What if we do a live? Well, not a live. What if a we do a Zoom, a Zoom where like we can all interact and they can all have, I actually have a lesson I want to teach. Ask you questions? A really great, I have another lesson I'm going to teach in it. <laughs> but then I think we leave it open and even go through, like I think what I would do is ha give them expectations. Like, okay, so now that we just did five days, what what is different in the 60? How can you set yourself up for success? Even because we've done three of them, like knowing even the people in the community that you should reach out to. Like, heck yeah. Be friends with. Heck yeah. Because there's so Dave, just say hell yeah. So many big sisters in there now. Yep. Um, so anyway, if you emailed, they'll, Alexa will send you a link. But I, I have not. I just want to figure out exactly what it is first before I <laughs> post it in the group here. Um, OK. <sighs> Guys, we made it to day four. <laughs> we're, we're just getting started. We got to hurry because you've got a podcast in 37 minutes. 37 minutes. But you can leave. I oh, can stay right I here. Can, I can jump out. All right. Day four. You know what that means? Day four is the final stretch of this boot camp. I want to ask you guys, um, how are you feeling? Dave, how are you feeling? I know what your answer is going to be. I am feeling angry about yesterday's workout. <laughs> because it's impaired my ability to walk normally. And sit on the toilet. Uh, oh, I sit just fine, thank you very much. Um, you sit fine? No. Like, what about You've never seemed more on the DL to me, Dave. I'm getting up and down. Oh yeah, that's true. There's nothing worse after a bad leg day or like a hard leg day. My like normal Getting workout on, on Wednesdays are leg days. So starting with a demonstration. Wait, did those, you do leg? Oh, you did leg day yesterday. I, I did leg day at the okay. gym yesterday after I did walking lunges. I don't have an ability to walk. You did some lunges after leg day, and you don't have the ability to walk. Okay, you have a medical problem then. <laughs> it's, it's gone. Um, but no, like, hold I, on. I gotta, I gotta, can we address that real quick? I, oh, yeah. I pinned it so it wouldn't go away. Yeah. I love this. Ooh. Carrie Ann says, guilty of not completing my five minutes of lunges yesterday, but I just did it for the last five minutes while listening to you both. Carrie. High five. Carrie. And then let me tell, like, Carrie Ann, great job. I don't know if you, if whoever was on at the beginning, I had internal dialogue yesterday, last night at 11 p.m. that had me thinking, oh shoot, I missed it. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. And I was like, holy moly. I was just about to break my integrity, but I didn't even think about it because we're not even aware. It doesn't seem like a big deal. So I got up and I did it. However. This story was not interesting the first time. So the fact that you are going back to tell it a second time is just, Phenomenal. Remember the lesson yesterday. Carry on. You freaking redeemed yourself. But I want everybody to remember the lesson from yesterday because there are more people on here than not that may not have done the five minutes. Remember, we are imperfect. We are. And if we expect. Wow, we are. Heidi and Dave are not. Perfect. You guys, I thought that they were. I thought these were just perfect humans. Anything to go perfectly. We're not perfect. Our challenge shouldn't go perfect. Uh, the boot camp shouldn't go perfect. Our how we are in a relationship isn't going to be perfect. How we run a. 
Yeah, it sure doesn't look like it, does it, Heidi? Business is not perfect, right? Sometimes we do it imperfectly just because others, we actually make a conscious choice to do it imperfectly and to make a mistake, to do something we shouldn't do. Being aware and understanding that because we're imperfect, it doesn't mean that we're broken. It means that we're human, right? Heidi, I'm going to assign you some homework, and that is to recognize the thing that you are doing imperfectly right next to you and get rid of him. And every single day, I want you guys to remember, we're always one meal or one workout or one choice away from from getting right back on track. So no matter what track of life it is, any area, physical fitness, relational, you as a parent, you are one choice away from getting right back on track. It doesn't matter how far down you've fallen. So if you haven't done the workout, I actually want you to go back to yesterday and watch Confess, Reassess, Recommit, the perfectly imperfect. I want you to try and follow that. And then I want you to put the past in the past. Like, I don't even want you to worry about the workouts you missed. I want you to just think about what's today and what is one thing today I can do to be 1% better than I was yesterday. You're not gonna be able to do every area of your life better, but just focus on one thing. Keep yourself winning. If you get rid of him, you'll be 100% better. Look at his smug ass right there. Robin did 11.50 p.m. last night. She made it in. She made it in. I love it. it. You and I both. Um, I want you guys to tell me, or not, I I don't want you to tell me. I want to tell you guys why I ask you every day how you're feeling. It's intentional. It's not just like a conversation starter. It's intentional. It is a practice. I invite every one of you guys to do every day as you move forward. Right. I want you to ask yourself, how does showing up in this way make me feel? So it's not just I want you to, yes, take a mental note of like how your body might feel the soreness. But I also want you to take an emotional note, a heart note, a mental note of how does my mind feel? How does my heart feel? How does it feel to keep myself winning? How does it feel to like shrink down from an hour a day to five minutes a day to commit to it and to complete it? Do I feel better? doing this than I did when I committed to an hour and I did 30 minutes. Like, think about it. You used to commit to an hour and you would do 30 minutes and you would probably still feel like a failure. So it's a bit of the uh, never try, never fail approach, I guess. Just lower your expectations. Did you learn that from Dave? Because you didn't do what you committed to, but here we are only committing to five minutes and completing it and feeling like a winner every single day. Yeah, I was running this morning. My, the cardio is now a part of my training program, 30 minutes. I don't uh, love cardio necessarily, so I ask people to jump into Instagram and keep me uh, distracted. And you also look stupid doing that, Dave. It's so lame, it's so pathetic. Someone sent over a note saying like, I always fall off plan. Why do I always fall off plan? What is the tip that you might have for sticking to what you've been sticking to? And the answer for me has been not over committing. And I think part- So instead of doing things that you are wanting to do, you just have to stop wanting to do them. It's kind of dumb. I'm sorry, the way you stick to a plan is you stick to a plan. Unless there's some sort of thing that you weren't taking into account when you made the plan. In that case, you need to readapt your plan so that it takes those factors into account. But otherwise, it's on, it's just a matter of you're not doing it. So you need to examine why am I not doing it? Is there something that some kind of procrastination? Is there some sort of anxiety that's keeping me from doing it? Like You need to reflect on why, not just be like, oh, well, then I just won't do it then I'll succeed. Never try, never fail. Part of what's beautiful about the five minutes that are happening here is that you feel great because you committed to something that you can actually follow through on. Awesome. Yeah. And that's part of why here we are on day four. People feel great. They're like, oh, my goodness. I said I was going to do something. I actually freaking did it. I'm surrounded by people that keeps like just celebrating the heck out of me. And even for those that fall off, there's recovery. 
And there's also a community of people saying, give yourself some grace, get back up, let's go. I mean, like, it's beautiful. Do you see, and some of the comments in here, it's like saying, I feel empowered, I feel unstoppable, I feel better than I've ever felt. And it's just been three to four days. Right. And you haven't done it perfectly, right? And you still feel power, you feel empowered. You actually have tools. After this boot camp is over, you, I'm telling you, if you took these tools, these things that are taught every day, you would actually be unstoppable. You wouldn't need anything. Stack you need small anything. wins. These are small wins. Kind of now, I think part of it though is understanding who you are. Like I understand who I am, and I know without accountability and without a goal, like a goal first, a why first. It's something we'll talk about in the challenge. But without a why first, and then a goal that follows it, and then accountability to hold me to it. Right. And then also looking at the big picture and saying, what roadblocks will come up and what plan do I have that I'm going to put in place so I don't let those roadblocks overcome me again. Right. And then having realistic expectations like we learned about, about, OK, I know the plan. I know the roadblocks. I'm set, but I'm still not going to do it perfectly. And that's OK. That is how I reach my goal. So I know there's a lot of you guys that are looking, I pulling up some of the comments. Um, People asking, will the page stay open after five days? Will we have access to this, these after five days? Well, I mean, how would that be the, how would they run their grift on you if it stayed open forever? We won't. We will not have access to these after five days. And this is why I keep telling you guys to make sure you're taking mental note, not mental, make sure you are writing down. You right now have access to every single video, right? So it's like in school, remember the teacher's like, I'm going to give you time to study and then you're going to take a test and I'm not giving you the book for the test. Why? Because this test, like this is to see how much you study. And here's what happens. You guys are learning. You're in a phase where you, you, I only want you to get out of this, what you're meant to get. I don't want you to have too much. I don't want you to go back and be overwhelmed. I want each of you individually to get what you're meant to get. And then do you know what the test is? The test is real life. Boo! Get off the stage. The reason they say that you're not going to have the book when you take the test is because if they say that you can have an open book, then they know that you're not going to review the material at all, that you won't study for it, and you literally won't learn anything about the topic the test is on. That's why they do that. It's not like, ugh. This is such a bad metaphor as well, Heidi. The test is game day is after this boot camp is over. And what's going to happen is the things that you are like, there are going to be things right now that are subconsciously registering in your brain and you don't even know it. Like you're like, oh, I'm focusing. All I remember is water, right? No. It's subconsciously because you're listening to me and Dave and Val and the videos and you have the worksheets. When game day happens, when real life hits between now and whenever your next thing is, whenever your next goal is, you are getting the opportunity to put these tips to use. You're getting the opportunity to actually experience life and life is going to trigger something. It's going to be like, oh my gosh, I thought all I got was 10 gold pearl. But I just remembered that thing Heidi said about perseverance. This is me in the middle of something really hard. Oh my gosh, I remember talking about the law of inertia. I remember talking about the law of motion. An object in motion stays in motion. So this thing right here is trying to stop me from persevering. Am I gonna let it? Is this gonna be that object that, right? Or am I going to persevere through this and keep myself in motion. So I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna happen that way. By the Will way, the I, Facebook. I'm oh, sorry, I was just gonna say you'll have you'll have the access until Sunday, isn't it? Till well, Sunday. What I, so oh yeah, I, yeah. I was just, so Facebook group and portal, or not portal. What's gonna happen? Because there were other comments, questions. So here's the way someone said: Our emails with workouts won't disappear, will they? Um. Um. Okay, so then, oh, and, okay, so a lot of things. Uh, Kim said, or Juliana said, I'm okay with email video links going down, but would love the Facebook group to stay open for an extra week. 
uh, for these videos, for the lives, for inspiration, motivation. So that's, um, our team actually saw that, Juliana. And so what we're gonna do, so yes, emails, you, what, you know, there's a, there are Chrome extensions and Firefox add-ons that you can add to your browser. And all you got to do is pop open the Facebook Live uh, replay in Facebook, and then you click the extension, and then you click download. That's, it's not hard. Whatever's in your inbox is going to remain. We don't have any magic powers to pull them out, but that would be amazing. I bet there's some software that would. Well, I think they're talking about the content that is that is hosted at the links, which you do have control over. But whatever, whatever the magic power, we don't have magic power still. Whatever is in your inbox is going to stay, stay in your inbox. Yes. But the link, so the link that takes you to the page where the videos are, that's not a learning management system. So like me, that's a special word for like in our challenges, we have a portal where all of the stuff is stored, right? You would have a login, all that stuff, and you get access to all the videos and all the workouts and blah, 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 blah. Um, the way that we set up this five day boot camp, it's on like a temporary landing page thing. And so it will come down. So the five day boot camp on Sunday at midnight, so Monday morning, that's not going to be available. So just watch through all the videos. And then when it comes to the Emails will always be there. Workouts will always be there. Your notes that you're taking will always be there. Yes, Andrea, print out emails and screenshot. Agree. Go to the landing page and take pictures, right? Where we kind of summarize the mindset tips and stuff. By the way, just like to, to explain part of the reason. All of this to do a five minute workout for five days. Do you see how they get you into overthinking everything and getting really dependent upon their content in order to do anything. We're t it's five minutes. Yesterday's workout apparently was five minutes, five minutes, 300 seconds of lunges. It, I, and they've been going on and on and on. It, it's, it's, it's just not that complicated. It's just not, okay? If you are wanting to do five minutes of exercise every day, the reason you're not doing it is not that you've needed coaching from Heidi Powell. I'm sorry, but it's not. There's a different reason. I don't know what it is from here because I can't see it, but it that's not it. What you need is not an expensive coach that's gonna charge you $5,000 for a mastermind or whatever the hell that is. The reason why certain things disappear is that people always have the best of intentions in deferring when they're going to get to the thing. Yeah, yes. And so creating a boot camp environment where there is urgency because of the fact that it is disappearing for the person who wants to get the most out of it, it actually creates that incentive to take the notes and spend the time and do the work on the worksheets because we're human. Yeah. I'm very guilty of this. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get to it. I have access to it forever and then I never go back to it. So if, you know, if you're in this and you're feeling these things, this is the time, this is the week. This is the week to dive super deep and take all the notes and use all the resources and, and then have them. I mean, how long does it take to write down five minutes of lunges? It, Dave, real subtle there, by the way, implying that enough people uh, are find what you do to be shitty that Basically, what you're saying is if you have too many pages out there to keep track of the comments on to delete the comments, you know, it just gets it gets burdensome, doesn't it? That's what he's basically saying. So they got to shut it down so that there's not 20 million pages out there that he has to delete comments from. To apply when the challenge is done. Oh, man, it's like I want to I just pinned it because I really want to answer it. Pinned I'm it. going to. But hold on. The, the challenge group. We are leaving this open for a week. So you will have a, I, I'm, maybe I misspoke. Maybe it's through Wednesday. I know we're leaving it open. Here's the reality. We're gonna leave it open 
for a week if it remains positive. But let me tell you from experience, what can sometimes happen is after things are over, some people can kind of come in because it's a free community, right? We're, I'm <laughs> so watching. If it stays positive, watchdog. we'll leave it open for a week. If it's- You're not a very good watchdog. Starts to feel like the second something doesn't feel like it's pouring positivity into the world, I, I it's time to pivot, right? Um, Megan asked how long our challenge workout. Why Dave? Why? This is not, I'm not here to talk about the challenge. I'm just really proud of it. I'm really proud of it. Um, we actually have, so we, we started with three programs. We increased to four this time around. We actually have five and we have an app that we're adding. So like you'll have, you have the learning management portal and then the world won't have the app yet. We should have moves so when you say like, certain things. Like when you say like, now we have an app, like we should say like, <laughs> I don't know, they're like, I can do my, my normal dance. We can do a whole host of things. Um, they're both terrible, Dave. You could do either one. And having an app's not that big of a deal these days, especially when there are so many shitty apps that I would settle for better mobile websites and, and, and ideally ones that don't have 20 million pop-ups to get your email address from me. By the way, temp-mail.org. Stop giving companies your real email address. Thank you. Um, seriously, just stop it. Why are you doing that? Stop it, don't. That don't try to get your email address and that don't try to convince you to download their fucking app, Reddit. I don't want your app. That's why I'm in my browser. So it depends, Megan. It depends on ability level. What's so cool. This again, is cool. I know what you're going to say. Well, it's cool. What I was going to say is when we first started, I might not be going the direction. When we first started, we had three, only three programs. And I say only because they weren't even, they didn't even have, they had modifications, but not, not nearly as many as we have now. Like it is made for beginner to advance now, made to like walk people through, but um, more so than way more than the last challenge even. But it was like three pretty intense programs, pretty intense. They were programs that were intense for me if done all Men's the way. Men's gym, women's Men's gym, gym, at home. Gym, and then an at home, but they were all more body sculpting style programs. They're really great. They are tried and true. And I, we had 850 people in the first one, 1200 in the second. And what's so cool, they were all ability levels. They were literally, they're people just like you. You would not believe the, the determination and the grit that they had. And I also came on live to teach them how to scale things, but like they did, and, and it's, you do what you can with what you've got. And if it means you go in and you do one superset, that's what you do. But people were completing these amazing workouts and they feeling were. more powerful than ever. But the, and the transformations are insane. But now, um, so we have those still, we have a booty program that's really amazing. And then now we have a body weight basics program, which is very similar to these workouts in here, all body weight and like the videos, <laughs> I'm so proud. I'm so grateful for my app partners. Yeah. Um, but the videos that go with it are instructional. So like every single video I walk you through, here's this move, here's how you scale it, add a backpack for weight, you can go to your knees. I talk through all of the form, like I am actually a, the coach. It's rad. Um, it looks so, amazing too. Anyway, so the workouts are between- oh My God, Dave, if you don't stop interrupting her and shut the fuck up. They're really as long as you, oh, and also on the, the app. So in the opposite part of the challenge, did you see this? You push a button, push, you, you tell can what make, the button decide is. if you want it to be, cause some of them go up to 90 minutes for the bigger programs. You can do, if you want that same program to be 30 minutes, you want, you're like, what can I push out of this workout? We do the thinking for you. So you click 30 minutes and it's a 30 minute workout. Even the most. Oh my God. Just like fitify. Intense. But if it's a 90 workout. minute workout, it actually had a drop down for 60 and, and for 30. Yep. So wow. Fitify will let you put in any number of minutes. Depending on how much time you had, you can decide, okay, what, how I'm much on, time do I have? I'm on pinning. It now. optimizes. 
Watch it be that it does three rounds of the same thing at 90 minutes and three and two rounds for 60 and one round for 30. Great. You created you created off brand Fitify. B- big whoop. The stinking thing, it's amazing. Oh, hold on, I gotta read this. Someone says, oh, oh, I gotta find your thing and pin it. Confessing, I did the first one with you and Dave. <laughs> Jenny, welcome back. However, did not follow through to completion. So excited about how far the program has come. Oh, Jenny, Jenny, listen to me right now. Jenny Pauling, you're pinned. Email Alexa at support. I, if, if you're doing it again, I'm, I'm letting you have the alumni discount because you aren't alumni. So if you end up doing it again, email Alexa and she'll give you the same deal that everybody else because I don't want you paying full price. You got to come back in. <laughs> um, anyway. All right. So very important. Well, no, we're, we're on day four. Still day three. Day four. That was a tangent. We haven't even started on what this is about. Classic. Um, and guys, I want you to know, too, that like when Jennifer, the OG challenge was such a wonderful group of ladies. Loves- this is this is why I cannot do lives. Susan, I know. So Kelly. Kathy, Kathy's one of our coaches. That's how it's grown. We actually have accountability coaches. We have nutrition coaches in it now. Like, I don't even, what's happened? It's unreal. It all, like all the work is done here. It's also done in the salon. Hold on, can we show? Oh my God. <laughs> We're gonna I mean, I, mean I did make a, a reel that was inappropriate for sharing. I would not let him. Because I mean, it was it. maybe making a little too much fun of you. We had a Zoom last night in the salon. Well. While hair was being done. I hold meetings from anywhere, right? Truly. Like, like I believe in the power of and. I don't have to. I don't have to sit in a boardroom or at a desk in an office to be a badass. No, you don't. I don't. I can do it wherever I want. Like, you can do it with and, silence behind you, or you can do it with four <laughs> blow dryers behind you while we're all trying to understand what you're saying. Hey. So that doesn't sound like it was very effective, based on how mean Dave is being about it. But okay, if you believe in the power of and conjunction junction, what's your function? You can do it literally anywhere. Do you want to come see this, Jenny? Totally do it too. Come here, come here, Jenny. You have I, to couldn't, I, I was unable to. I was unable to do the reel because I did close-ups on the rest of the team's okay, so faces. This is how it starts. It starts with them smiling, right? Because they know where this is going. Here we go. Yeah, they're <laughs> gonna start laughing. <laughs> Guys, this is me leading a meeting, full on leading a meeting, okay? They're doing my hair. Look at them. They're trying to listen. Oils in your head. They're taking- That's so disrespectful to the people who are giving you their time that you are having this bullshit going on. I would be so mad. I would be like, call me back when you're in a quiet professional location um and don't mention this again i would be so pissed that it's this lack of empathy you you people could have a million other things they would rather be doing than being in a meeting okay meetings suck and i know that as the person who is in charge of the company you don't get how bad meetings are they're terrible. They're taking time out of their day to be at your meeting and to be attentive. And you can't even give them the courtesy of making it easy to listen to you and taking it seriously. Notes? No, they're, um, so oh, those are not foils. foils. Those are, let's. Also, this is not interesting. Let's get a close up on it. Oh, they're watching. We know what getting your hair done looks like, okay? Do you see see how none of the people that you're talking with are getting their hair done? Because that would be disrespectful to you. Just like you are being disrespectful to the people on this meeting. <laughs> Hold on, and then it gets better. So this same one ends up going to where, oh, oh, same same video. Same video. And now we're in the chair. They're brushing my hair out. We're in the chair. We're trying to figure. <laughs> and then. And then they're. 
Can you imagine wanting to show this? Can you imagine doing this in the first place and then thinking it was so funny how you wasted everybody's time and just basically spit in their face? Blow drying. <laughs> I, if I had to listen to my boss getting his getting his hair blow dried while I like in a meeting when I'm supposed to be listening and I could be doing a million other things. Oh my God, I would just hang up. I would hang up and be like, call me back when you're ready. That looks like she's listening intently. <laughs> what? That's hilarious. All right. Oh, and then uh, now they're actually curling my hair. We're still- Heidi, we don't give a shit other than it's fucking rude of you. And the people that are on this call are not telling you that because you're their boss. Still going? So anyway, I don't know. They, and I, but I want like my people that work with me to know that they can do the same, you know, like I don't. But they can't though. I want people to feel like they're stuck to a desk unless you have to do stuff. I want them to know. Okay, well, there's a reason that it usually is done that way. Like be a mom, be with your kids and we'll just. Jesus Christ, Dave's veneers are just blinding. <laughs> What are you laughing at? You're, it you're was just real? funny. No, it was funny because at one point, finally, he said, you know what? Maybe this would be more productive if we wait just five more minutes so they can finish <laughs> blowing out the hair. And so then Heidi hung up and the rest of us were on the on the call. And it was like we could we just like burst into laughter because what are you going to do? And then we went right back to, to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that that amount of time is their time that they gave to you that you wasted. And I know that you think it's funny, even though it's not funny, it's just really fucking rude. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had air, AirPods in. So yeah, the, you could hear everything fine. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Was it really loud? With Very that? loud. <laughs> with the blow dryer? Very loud. It sounded like you were coming to us live from the scene of a hurricane <laughs> reporting for Eyewitness like News. A, yeah, like, oh like yeah. Blower? There was an air blower. Yeah, I know you're working with <laughs> a gardening crew. Amazing. Oh, Mandy said Heidi to go get her. Listen, the reality is I just really love what I'm doing. I, th none of this explains why you needed to be getting your hair done during, while leading a meeting. I, I'm sorry, but 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 there there's there's no level of scheduling or busyness that leads to that output. Um, we were talking about, we're going to be shooting some uh, cooking segments with Chef David, and it's going to be so Turn off your fucking email notifications. So much fun. Val, Val said I was reading lips <laughs> with hair blowing in front of my face. So See, it's rude. I made it a little bit too hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um... <clears throat> All right, uh, Tiffany, okay, someone repeat, if you want to do the challenge after this, email support or we get an email with info. Uh, at some point you will. I'll, I'll send things at some point. If you want to like do it now, you can, but just know that we're not totally, I don't know exactly what I'm going to, I want to throw in like a free, I was just brainstorming. I love we'll the Zoom idea. A Zoom well, it's a great idea. or something, but I do not have it all set up. So you can email support regardless when the time is right, when I actually get my crap together and I know what I'm going to. I'll take the Vegas odds on that. I'm going to give to you guys, I'll, I will mention it in here. So you'll have the information or email. I don't know. Good work. How it'll work. We'll figure it out. Um, oh, but I do want you to know, um, it does not need to be the challenge. Like get, oh, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because it comes in a video. I need you guys though to have a plan moving forward. It doesn't not have to be with me, but have a plan. Maybe it's with an accountability person in this group. Maybe it's another program, have a plan. My goal with this is to equip you with tools no, ma no matter which plan you follow. No your goal with this is to get people to sign up for your paid programs. So don't piss in our faces and tell us it's raining. No matter which group you join, what you learned in here, I promise you will apply to whatever it is you do next. You don't even have to work on a fitness goal. If you're like, after this, I'm going to go attack my career. 
I want you to remember this. I'm sorry, but I would barely rely on Heidi for fitness advice. And I'm sure as fuck would not rely on her for advice about anything else other than generalized internet aimless flailing. Stuff and attack your career with integrity, perseverance, perfect understanding and knowing resilience through perfectly imperfect and CRR. I'm, and then I'm not gonna go into today's video too much, but I want all of these things to run through your brain. I want you to remember as you're learning in a new environment, like am I 1% better today? Am I showing up for myself? Am I showing up for other people? But my Okay, this sounds exhausting. Myself first, right? Um, okay. Yes, we'll talk about today's tip. <laughs> we'll Did we get start the, the show? I, I'm, I'm going to skip through some of the these. <laughs> Guys, we had some really great shout outs. I'm going to skip it because we're getting people going, can we talk about the tip, please? <laughs> yes. Um, I want to. Yeah, see, again, with wasting people's time, people are on here to get the information that you promised them. And instead, you're talking about leading meetings while getting your hair done, showing them every step of getting your hair done with some screenshot that we can barely see and telling people about doing lunges at night and you did three and then you did four and then you turned around. Like, what the fuck? No one cares. No one cares. Talk about the, so let's do a, a recap for yesterday. We talked about three things in this video, the three things. We talked about perfectly imperfect. We talked about realistic expectations, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so you don't need to mention them again. And then we talked about CRR, confess, reassess, recommit. I want you guys to text message right now, which ones, which thing, or which little gold nugget resonated the most? Comment. I think, well, I'll just say the hardest one for me is- Nobody fucking asked you, Dave. Is loving every part of myself, even the parts I don't yet necessarily- Dave, you've, you, you deep down you do love every single part of yourself okay you might be deeply insecure about it but you do really have peace with or that like are still such work in progress mm -hmm. in, in fact it is the only thing that you love in this life at all perfections the idea of being perfectly imperfect Ugh, i'm so tired of this you're just regurgitating you 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 are just throwing these buzzwords that don't mean shit perfectly fuck that you're throwing them into a blender blending them up into a little smoothie so that you can double your calories drinking them regurgitating them back up and then drinking them again that's what you're doing we're you're just spitting out the words in different orders it's so stupid it's so meaningless it's so useless it does not take this much thought to do a five minute workout every day i'm sorry it, it just doesn't. If you think that's what you need to do a five minute workout every day, there's another problem. It is just, it's just a hard concept because I mean- if That's because you overthink everything, Dave. You still don't even know who the fuck you are. People say plenty of really crappy things about me. I promise you. Yeah, that's because you're a grifter and because you are just an embarrassing, humiliating, person that it is fascinating to watch just like a train wreck and it's disappointing that you're drinking again do i say worse things to myself yeah and so it's you know like finding a way to get to a place of giving myself the kind of grace that i deserve and an appreciation that like i'm human I i'm human it's okay that it's messy it's okay i am so so sick of the I'm human excuse being used to justify coming up short for the people who care about you. That it's still a work in progress. It's OK. That part's just been the hardest. And well, I don't know. Can I can I help you? Uh, okay. You do every other time we're not live. Okay. You should try right now in front of other people. Um. I don't want to see you try anything that's from being in private in front of us. I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to think about seeing that shit. I don't want to think about thinking about seeing that shit. So don't ever say that, please. Thank you. Maybe help you see it in a different way. So I'm going to give two things. Number one, and for anyone that might be in a similar position, try to see yourself the same way you would choose to see your kids and their imperfections. I do like right? that. Because you look at little... 
right? And anything about him that you that he might struggle with, you look at it and you're like, man, I'm, I, that makes it, I get chills. But like, yeah. you don't know it. Yet. I don't have kids, yeah, buddy. But like that thing you think is a flaw is actually going to be your greatest experience for growth. Your great yeah, yeah. catalyst for growth. You look at maybe reasons why he gets in trouble, his mischievousness, and you're like. That's going to get you somewhere. That's good. I love that idea. But it doesn't mean that like that thing going forward exactly as it is, is going to be the thing that, that makes him great. But when he struggles because of it, like when we fall, when we feel the pain that can come from some of our mistakes, it's in those moments that we get to decide. And we, and, and I, we get to decide, am I going to use this as a learning experience or am I going to use this as a reminder that I'm a failure? And only when you can say, this is going to be a learning experience, can you begin to actually work through some of that shit, sorry for saying that, not sorry, um, that like has been holding us back. That's when we can eliminate the shame and actually become what we're meant to become. True story. Oh my God, it seems like neither of you are ever any closer to becoming who you become or whatever the fuck. How long is it gonna take? I got stuff to do. Just wanna give you a quick content warning here. Heidi is going to um, talk about having an ED. Um, if that's something you're not prepared for, uh, I will have a chapter marker in the description or you can skip to the time on the screen. Thank you. My eating disorder was a thing I had shame around. Yes, during, but it only it was only a 12 year thing. I say only holy, only. holy moly, 12 years, the most painful emotionally, mentally, wow, the most painful thing I've ever been through in my life. But equally as painful was even after and when I was healing and not binging and purging and not, yeah. and I, but I was, I, I was like healing through being busy, right? Like there was so much shame that I had. I, true story, I. How, okay, Dave, how can you have said, wow, as if you'd never heard about this before, which is weird that someone you're, you were at least were in a relationship with, you didn't know something that was very, 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 very serious that they went through for 12 years. You ne That never came up. But then you're nodding as if you've heard this story before. Which is it, Dave? Stop nodding. Stop it. I had an eating disorder from the time I was 15 until I was divorcing. Actually, yeah, probably 27. 14 or 15 mm. to 26, 27. My first husband... I never, I never told him about it. He's only learned through media because I've talked about it. I finally got to the point where it came up on a show on Extreme. I did media about it and I finally, and that released a lot. Chris, when I met Chris and we started creating Extreme Weight Loss, I never once mentioned to him that I ever had previously struggled with an eating disorder because I was so embarrassed by it. Mm. Like I was so ashamed by it, right? And in my mind, I used to always say, I will never, ever be anything but ashamed of this because I didn't know better until when we were. Yeah. Randy says, I remember that show. It was Alyssa's episode in season three. And I actually had helped a girl in season one who also had bulimia. And that she was one of the first people people I opened up to because I saw her pain and her dad's pain for her and her dad mm. i actually opened up to her dad first and said she's going to be okay because i am you know it was one that's of those good. things that's good and the more i opened up about it and the more i shared my struggle and my pain and my shame and my embarrassment even the details like i remember i haven't didn't start sharing details of what a binge was like until the past year because it was so embarrassing yeah but you have to give yourself grace and peel back those layers and i now believe that 12 year mistake, right? I don't even want to call it a mistake anymore, but that 12 year series of bad decisions, even other bad decisions that I've made, like I am who I am because of them. Yeah. I developed compassion and empathy and, and I- What a ridiculous mindset of toxic positivity that is. First of all, it's not, 
it's not it's not I feel like it's not really fair to characterize it as a series of mistakes or as mistakes. An eating disorder is a psychiatric diagnosis. It is a psychiatric problem. It's it's not it's not just a series of bad decisions. It is a psychiatric condition. And I'm sure that the show Extreme Weight Loss really helped a lot of people overcome eating disorders and certainly not develop new ones. I mean, so I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know where you're coming from with this, Heidi, but I I don't know. To me, it doesn't sound like you've done that much good for it. Um, I, I'm glad that you've uh, that you're in recovery from yours, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know everything about everyone else's case. And I would highly, sus- I would, I would, n- I would avoid name dropping a show titled "Extreme Weight Loss" as highlighting um, your incredible contribution to putting people with eating disorders into recovery. That doesn't sound credible to me. It just doesn't. Okay. I developed the ability to know that I can make it through anything. Yeah. Tammy says secrets keep us sick. Well, so good. for you, yeah, no, I to say, I, are your in imperfectness is actually you just don't see it yet. You're like still in it, right? Yeah. And like, yeah, you don't see why it's actually awesome to have an eating disorder. See what I mean? It's toxic positivity. I think that everyone who has had an eating disorder would choose if given the choice to have not had that happened no matter what little gifty gifts it gave them at the end i mean because here's the thing the the recovery rate for eating disorders is among the worst of any psychiatric disorder it's terrible so it is very offensive to then say that oh it's a gift when it is that damn hard for people to overcome them no the thing is i've come to terms with so much good coming from the learning that's come from some of my mistakes and i love what you say about like dave you haven't you haven't learned shit if you're talking about the past three years you haven't learned shit let's get that crystal clear you haven't learned shit of how you to preach the approach the kids i wish though that i could you know take my phone away for a day the way that i would punish my kids for doing something that was in misalignment with who they say they'd hope to be or who i'd hope them to become and then do it yeah like, I'm just, okay so you're saying I'm you hard want, on myself but like even that i don't think you need to punish yourself because you know what your greatest punishment is it's how you feel I, oh, I didn't see. I didn't even hear it as a punishment, Heidi. I thought he. I. I, I really think his life would be better if someone took his phone away. I. I. I want to be. I trust me. I am every day trying to create these little wins, create integrity, momentum, so that I can feel the thing I'm hoping to feel. And there's still days where it gets really freaking hard, and I'm like, ah. Maybe it's because you're over fucking thinking it. I am such a messy, you know, whatever. And I'm like, ah, you're human. It's fine. But the integrity integrity piece actually counteracts the negative self-talk, builds the confidence. It's why something like this is such an important thing for us to do for five days. Well, and I think too, like you said at the beginning, you said, I'm my worst critic, right? And like, doesn't matter what anyone says to me online, what I say to myself is more painful than all of it, right? But like, so that... Please, I'm sorry, but someone saying something mean about you online, most of the time it's going to hurt worse than something you say to yourself. That's why you need people in your life to remind you because the progress I've seen you make and you've seen me make, right? Yeah. Dave hasn't made any. What progress are you talking about, Heidi? What? Give us an example. He has not progressed at all. We're both works in progress. You are the best version of yourself now. Like, Heidi, that is objectively false. Thank you. And I agree with this. You, Thank you. I, I, I agree with this. And it's been, it's the result of what you've had to go through, <laughs> but someday you're going to say gotten to go through. I agree. Toxic positivity. I think the headline for me is before I step off this uh, live, if you struggle at all with perfectly imperfect, good news. You and I have a huge thing in common and uh, things like this, this five day boot camp 
having wins stack small wins setting reasonable goals and then you know sticking to your word that is the best counter to the struggle with perfectly imperfect feelings or being a really tough critic on yourself amen amen who are you podcasting with uh we gotta i gotta that. double check hold on <laughs> Uh, I'm Brett Bartholomew. I'm okay. heading there right now. All right. I thought you were going to say Brett Favre. <laughs> if it was Brett Favre, I would be in Green Bay, Wisconsin right now. Oh, speaking of that. Oh. I mean... I second what that cricket is saying. So I think that's where I'm going to cut it off because I was mainly just interested in the part where Dave was there because that means I can check in on two of my uh, least favorite people at once. Well, I, I don't, I honestly, you guys, I don't have that strong of feelings about Heidi. I just kind of don't give a shit. I just hate Dave. And I think he, I think they're both grifters, and I, but I think Dave is a bigger grifter and I think he's a more, a more toxic human on this planet. How many times are they going to say perfectly imperfect? It, it's just this garbage. But I think that it gets you it gets you hooked. It becomes addictive and you feel like you need Heidi's next challenge course or you need her five thousand dollar mastermind and you need Dave's next book and you need to follow the live streams and the, and watch the videos. But really, it is it. it if you look at their content over time, it, it is unchanging. It is completely static, talking about being a work in progress. Oh, I'm not perfect. Oh, I'm just a human. Blah, 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 blah. Have a human moment. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And it never changes. It never goes anywhere. How are they going to help you make progress when Heidi here is still not over her her second divorce is still still in this incredibly terrible non relationship as we learned so no progress being made there and she's had like two years to make that progress hasn't done it hasn't gotten any closer to it in fact seems to be sliding backwards and dave here who is clearly not still in recovery, in my opinion, that is just me speculating, and who has, who is talking about the same exact shit he was talking about two years ago. Nothing changes, he never sees his kids, it's a bunch of bullshit, it's bullshit. It, they can't even make progress themselves, at least certainly not progress that I can that is perceptible to me. I don't see any, do you? I I certainly do not. And that's that's why I I continue covering these people because it's just, it's such bullshit to claim that you have all the answers for people when you don't even have the answers for yourself. If you if you're so on this journey to finding out like who you are and who you are meant to be when you become who you've became or whatever then who are you? Tell me, why, why do you still not know? I've been Mac, peace out, bye!